How are you? Hello, love. There you go. How are you? And you didn't think I smoked, did you? Well, anyway, welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the show that has more productivity than any other, because not only do I have to get out one finger, but three, because it's three, two, one, you're on. The show that packs a punch, we have a quiz, a game, and fabulous prizes. I'm so glad that you joined us once again at home, and a big welcome to our studio audience, because I know we've got a few groups here tonight. There's a, we have a party from a large brewery with us, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's here, is it? Yeah, I can see you. Can you, can you see two of me? <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one character who could make our contestant struggle tonight. You know who that is? My mate, our resident booby prize, Dusty Bin, looked after by Fiona Curzon. There they are. Beautiful. And well, he looks good. Well, he's all dressed up as a conjurer this week because the theme of our show is magic. And we've got some tip-top tricks tripping out of our top hat tonight. So you've got to be sober to say that. Well done, Fiona Curzon. <laughs> The only lady to get out of Crossroads alive. <laughs> but right now, without question, let's meet the most important people, as always, on our program, our contestants. Greet them, please, ladies and gentlemen. Seed and Sue Hart from Solihull. Clive Morgan and Sharon Briggs from Hampstead. Ken and Anne Gouge from Skelmersdale. Right, we start, as always, with our quiz, ladies and gentlemen. Each of our couples can win up to £1,000. £10 each correct answer in the first round, two rounds of questioning. Let's meet our first couple tonight, who are Anne and Ken Gouge, and you come from Skelmersdale in Lancashire. Ken, I see here that you're an advisor in drama. Well, you come to the right place. We have a drama every five minutes here. <laughs> now, what exactly does your job entail? I work with teachers in schools. Um, I run in service work and I also run a youth theatre. Uh -huh. I see. Now, listen, Anne, about you. You've got a family, two sons, yes? That's right, yes. And what are their names? Paul is five and five. Mark is three. I see. Will they both be watching? Uh, yes, I hope so. No, go on. Give them a quick wave. Go on, don't mess around. Wave to them. Yeah, Hi. 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 <laughs> Working mum, too, what do you do? For, what do you work at? Um, I'm a teacher in a sixth form college mm -hmm. and I teach um, business type subjects like typing and uh, telephone reception. Mm -hmm. And what sort of hobbies do you have? Um, I like cooking Anything and particular? eating. <laughs> well, we all love that one. <laughs> Too much, maybe. Let's have your questions. Libby Roberts has your questions. <laughs> Libby, let's have them. <laughs> Lovely as ever. Like the barnet. Can't oh, be bad. Thank you. Good. Would you like to select your questions, please, Ken and Anne? One of the three envelopes, so we don't know what okay. questions you have. Good. Now, you know we like you to answer alternately, of course. Yes. Ladies first. Two ways we can stop you if you make a mistake or if you run out of time. And if you don't know an answer, just say don't know. And I'll go on to your partner with the next question. This question is about superstitions, some bringing good luck and some bad. We will give you part of a phrase and we want you to give us the object we have left out. See a pin and pick it up. All day long will bring good luck. So the object there is a pin. So see uh, and pick it up is a pin. Pin, right. Never walk underneath one. A ladder. Don't put them on the table. Shoes. Never open one up indoors. Umbrella. Throw some over your shoulder when you spill it. Salt. Touch. Pass. Hang one over the doorway. Pass. A black one crosses your path. Cat. Breaking one brings bad luck. Mirror. Bride hopes to meet this person. Don't know. Right. Well, the bride hopes to meet this person, in fact, was a sweep. Oh. Yes, yeah, a chimney mm. sweep. Not many of them around today, yeah. is there? Touch wood. Oh. That's a difficult one. Well, an easy one, a difficult one. Hang one over the door, doorway was a horseshoe. And uh, that's about it, I think, as far as we've got it here. Yes, it is. So what do we have? Seven right. 70 pounds at the end of the first round. Good for you. Classic. Lovely. Good. Sit. Now, here from Solihull, West Midlands. I know that well, the Solihull. Sid and Sue Hart. Heart to heart. That's uh -huh. right. Good. Now, you're not a millionaire, Sid, are you? But uh, I do know that you deal with green stuff, yes? Yes, grocery. A green grocery, fine. I bet you meet a few people at the store, don't you? Yes, quite a few. Now, then, what about you, Sue? What do you do? I'm a beauty consultant. Yes, I can believe that. How did you two meet? Because that is interesting, isn't it? Um, my mother used to go to the store and buy her green grocery. And she said that she used to go to this gentleman with these two sons. I ought to go and meet him. Oh, and you did, and that yes. was it? Great. She came down and we met. Well, I'm glad that you're both here. Let's get your questions. Libby Roberts has your questions. Here you go, Libby. 
Take them, please. One of those two envelopes. Anyone will do. Thank you. Okay, Sid. Right. Now then, let's see how we're going to do for you in the first round. Ten pounds each correct answer. This question is about signs of the zodiac. We will give you the English name and we want you to give us the name used by astrologers. Now, the archer is known as Sagittarius. So that's the one we'll give you to start. The archer is... Sagittarius. The bull. Don't know. The lion. Leo. Twins. Don't know. Fish. Pisces. Virgin. Don't know. Crab. Scorpio. Mm. Ah, no, it's not. It's cancer, the crab. In fact, that's my birth sign, so I do know that one. And it's one I would suspect a lady would know that question. I'm afraid the others you didn't know. Bull was Taurus, the bull. Twins were Gemini. And Virgo was Virgin was Virgo. OK? So at the end of that, we have three right, I think. So you've got 30 pounds. Yes, you have. 30 pounds. Still not a bad start. Pretty good. Sharon and Clive. Sharon and Clive are from London, and uh, Clive, you're from Hampstead, and Sharon Briggs, you're from Frean. Is that right, Frean Barnet? Yeah. I say Frian, Frean Barnet. <laughs> you're not married yet, you're engaged. That's right. And what month do you plan to get married? In May. Oh, so you may get married? Well, possibly. <laughs> Still thinking about it. What about you? you? You play here for two football teams. That's right. And what are they called? Uh, Crouch End Vampires and the Coffin Casuals. The Crouch End Vampires? That's right. And the coughing casuals. Yes, that's with a GH, not with that. <laughs> <laughs> coughing casuals, you can celebrate with a gallon of Galloway's after that, I'm sure. And you two met when you saw Clive on stage somewhere. Where was that? Yes, uh, Clive was actually Prince Charming in an anti-dramatic show. Oh, did you know he was a vampire then? No. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> let's have your questions. Can we have them, please, Libby? Right, lovely. Thanks very much. OK, now then, let's see how you're going to get on. Don't forget, we will let you have the first one to start with here. This question is about phrases which are often used by people in a particular profession. Very often at the beginning of a sentence, you'll hear, my lords, ladies and gentlemen. That's usually used by a toastmaster. So that's what we'll start you with. My lords, ladies and gentlemen is used by a... Toastmaster. Say ah, used by a... Doctor. Hold very tight, please. Bus conductor. Let us pray. A vicar or reverend. Sit down and open your books. Teacher. Abracadabra. Magician. Watch the birdie. Cameron. I say, I say, I say. Don't know. What am I bid? An auctioneer. Are you being served? Um, a retailer. We accept that? Yes, we will. A retailer. Good. I've got that from Debbie Sutherland. Uh, our lady there, she says, I can take that. The only one you didn't know, I say, I say, I say. That's used by a comic or a funny man. And don't worry, nobody would know that on this show. But you've done pretty well, because at the end of that round, you've got nine, and that's 90 pounds. Lovely. Good for you. So, at the end of the first round of our quiz this week, we have Sue and Sid there. They've got 30 pounds. We've got Anne and Ken up there, number one. They're on 70 pounds. Lead at the moment, couple number three, Clive and Sharon, 90 pounds. Good for you. OK. <laughs> All right. Second round of questions, Ken, this time. And you're going to go for 70 pounds each correct answer. Fiona, can we have them, please? Thanks very much. Would you like to select one of those three envelopes? Oh. Here we are. Anyone will do. That's it. Good. Fine. Thank you. Now. Here we are again. This question is about words in standard dictionaries, begin, which begin with the letters V-A. V-A. We will give you a definition. We want you to give us the word. So words beginning with V-A. Now, a frill around the bed is a valance. So that's what we'll start you with. A frill around the bed is a... Valance. Courage. Valor. Papal state in Italy. Vatican. Manservant for your clothes. Valet. Holiday for students. Vacation. Opposite of rear guard. Vanguard. Card for February the 14th. Valentine. Cellar with arched roof. Vault. Light vehicle for transport. Pass. And destruction caused deliberately. Vandalism. Right. The only one you didn't know was light vehicle for transport was a van. <laughs> there you are. Well, there's some very <laughs> difficult ones there. That one's tripped you up, but you've yeah. done very, very well. You got nine right at the end of that. What have you got? 630 pounds you've got. Very good. Got it. <laughs> OK, Fiona, Sid, Sue, choose your questions. Thanks a lot. You're going for £30 each correct answer. OK, now this question is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters N-I. N-I. We will give you a definition. We want you to give us the word. So words beginning with N-I. Now, an old-fashioned name for a golf club is a niblick. 
So that's what we'll start you with. An old-fashioned name for a golf club is a... Niblick. <laughs> from sunset to sunrise. M-I. Don't know. Don't know. Small, sharp bite. Nip. Most abundant gas in the atmosphere. Nitrogen. Early name for a jukebox. Don't know. River in Egypt. Nile. Principal alkaloid in tobacco. Don't know. Capital of Cyprus. Yes, Sorry? Nicosia. Nick yes, your brother's daughter? Niece. Oh, right on the buzzer there. Were we... Can we... Um, yes, we can take that. Yes, right on the buzzer. Niece was right. OK. Principal alkaloid in tobacco was nicotine. Early name for a jukebox was a Nickelodeon. And from sunset to sunrise, nice. night. Yeah, now we know. So at the end of that round, what do you have? You've got 180 pounds. Not a bad night's work. Wine is good. Sharon and Clive, <coughs> thank you very much, Fiona. I've dropped it. Never mind. 90 pounds for each correct answer you're going this time. This question is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters S-H. Now, we will give you a definition. We want you to give us the word. So words beginning with S-H. Place for great disorder is a shambles. That's what we'll start you with. A place for great disorder is a... Shambles. A land along the edge of the sea. Sure. Large group of fish. Shoal. Front part of the lower leg. Shin. Roughly built hut. Shack. Garment for a dead body. Don't know. Small mouse-like mammal. True. Gesture with the shoulders. Shrug. Head of, the, of an Arab tribe. Shake. Small building for buying and selling. Shed. No, shed is shop. <laughs> Near enough. <laughs> Wasn't too far out. Shot. Sure. Garment for a dead body was a shroud. Other than that, I think we're right. Should be eight right. What have we got at the end of your round? 720 pounds. That's what you've got. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know whether you noticed, ladies and gentlemen, the groups of letters we gave each of our couples this week were V-A-N-I-S-H, which, of course, spelled vanish, which ties in with the theme of our show of magic. But at the end of our round here, we've got Sue and Sid there on 180 pounds, couple number one, Anne and Ken are on 630 pounds, but the winners of the quiz this week, no question, Clive and Sharon, 720 pounds they've got. That's it. And said, it's always a shame to have to say goodbye to our couples. They're such nice people that come on the show. And it's never easy, you know, when you're sitting here and that clock's ticking away, is it? It really isn't easy. But, however, you've got 180 pounds there. Would you like to Thank take you. a hold of that? Thank you very much. There, of course, is that ceramic dusty Thank bin. You, you know minute. what they're like to grab a hold of. Very, very important indeed. Anyway, it's been lovely having you with us. Thank you, Sue. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Love to everybody in the ballroom. <laughs> take care. Thanks, Sue. Right. OK, folks, we're away just for a couple of minutes. See you soon on 3, 2, 1. Don't go far, will you now? ladies and gentlemen, of our magic show where we have Ken and Anne from Skelmersdale against Clive and Sharon here from North London. They're about to watch the next of the three items we have lined up for you tonight. Now, as you know, at the end of each one of these items, one of the characters will come here to the table, leave a clue object, read a rhyme. When we have three on the table, then we're going to find out with the elimination question which couple goes through and hopefully takes home one of those great prizes tonight. Right, so let's have our first item tonight. You know, your place has now been reserved at the magician's dinner. I don't know what they had to eat, but I don't think it was rabbit pie. Anyway, Sit back as they're having their coffee. Let's join them. <laughs> Nothing there, I fancy. Fancy a drink, lads? Yeah, you bet, oh, Mike. Yeah. Please. OK, let's see. Well, I've got the old drink here. Now, what the, uh, what would you think you'd like? Maybe some uh, some uh, brandy? Oh, OK. Some uh, whiskey? Or some port? Well, brandy. Chris. Brandy. 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 Yeah. brandy. Little drops of brandy tend to make me sing a lot. There we are. Thank you, thank you, cheers. And one for me. Cheers, Perfect. mate. Right, cheers, yeah. lads. Hey, are you still doing the vanishing act with your wife? No, she kept coming back. <laughs> I've got a great trick now. I saw her in half the hard way. Oh? Yeah, lengthways. Oh, so, sort of a trial separation. <laughs> good one, good one. Oh, dear. Oh, oh dear. Just go to... Oh, dear. Um, it, it always takes time when I do this. I, Oh, very good. The lovely meal. 
Oh, look, there's some chicken left. <laughs> Cigarette, Chris. Oh, weird, not a bad idea. I am. Lovely. Cigarette, Thank Mike. Thank you. I am. That's right. lovely. Okay. Good. One for me. Thank you. Mm. Hey, you're slipping. You used to be able to produce half a dozen of those. Yeah, well, the, the doctor told me to cut down, you know. Hey, Mike, look at this. We invite a professional as guest of honour. He's nicked off the flipping cutlery. No, it's it's the Uri Gala bit. You know, the fork bending. Oh, what? The fork bend. Breathe on there, Chris. <sighs> oh. Hey, that's a good trick. Must be the brandy. Ah. <laughs> Listen, I saw a great trick last week. Little Swedish fella. Truly amazing. What's he do? Well, he gets this fella up on stage to fire a shotgun. A shotgun, mind you, at him. And he catches all the pellets in his teeth. Oh. God, I bet he makes a good living out of that. No, as a matter of fact, he swallowed the pellets, got lead poisoning and died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, gentlemen, shall we conclude the evening in the traditional Certainly. manner? Yes, indeed. Please stand. There we go. There we go. Ready? <laughs> we'll have to practice that at cost of fortune every year. <laughs> Lovely. Terry, good to see you, Terry. How are you, Terry? Fine, 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 fine. He's a very, very busy guy. You're all over the world these days, aren't you? Well, you have to be with my act. <laughs> yeah. I believe he does a great act, this guy. Listen, last time I saw you, we were going to the States. You've been there again recently? Yeah, been a couple of times. Yeah. And where else are you off to? Uh, Canada. There you go, you see? See, when uh, you're down, you're really down, Terry. Well, it's bad. <laughs> what are you going to leave these folks as the clue here? This is uh, the new magician saw for sawing something up. Really? Yeah, I'll show you. I mean, if the desk is a bit big, let's right. do that and... <laughs> Or your nails at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the musician saw, right, OK. Yeah. That, that's going to be the clue. And what about the rhyme for them, too? Here's the it? rhyme, OK? That's one way of clearing the table, just throw it all away. <laughs> but will you be doing the same, or will you leave it where it lay? Well, you've left it where it lay, and it's yeah. not stopped yet. <laughs> it's about <laughs> to any moment. <laughs> Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Seabrook. Thank Cheers, you. Terry. OK. okay. Well. Well. Well, they're having chats here already. Any idea what you think it could be, Clive? She thinks it could be a dishwasher. You think it could be a dishwasher? Yeah, you think that? What do you think it could be, then? It could be um, a dining... Uh dinner service we're laying the table oh well that's nice that straight away both couples here are thinking absolutely about them well i'll tell you what we'll do we're going to have our next item right now because we're very very fortunate we brought somebody over from the famous lido in paris this fellow really has a way with the birds ladies and gentlemen greet mr jan matt
Madame. Wonderful, really terrific act there. Thank Something you very else. much. Listen, you're at the Lido in Paris right now, yes? Yeah. How long have you been there? Oh, we finished uh, this month. This month? Huh? Yes. Quite a long stint. A lovely yeah. place to play. Good to have you here. And what are you going to leave the folks here? This is the clue, yes? Abracadabra. Yeah. Yeah? And do you have a rhyme to read as well? Yes, I have something for you, but I don't read very well English. And it's better well, he said that very you well. Yourself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jean Mad. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Well. Clive and Sharon and, and Ken and Anne, this is what he, in fact, was going to say. He's left you the abracadabra card there. It says, it goes through the air with a buzz. It'll give you a point of view. You'll find 13 before it. Does 13 bother you? Now, any idea what you think that could be? 13 before it. Mm, a future. It's a future. 13 is unlucky. Yes. Yeah. 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 There you are. Now, they're playing against you. Don't start playing with him. Hang glider. Yeah, hang glider. Like hang glider. <laughs> like well, not bad ideas. Any idea? No. no. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we're going to do. Have one more item, and then we're going to have three on the table. Then I'm going to have to ask you to make up your minds which you'll reject to see which of our couples, in fact, go through to part three. For our third item, once again, we go to the continent, and here's a fellow who really knows the ropes. A sunny man from sunny Spain, ladies and gentlemen, the great Soprendo. <laughs> Buenas noches, senores y señoras. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is the Great Sofrendo, and I am a magician. But tonight, no conjuring tricks. All together? No. Don't be so soft. No conjuring tricks at all, ladies and gentlemen. Just miracles. For my first miracle, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Don't laugh on your own. They'll think I'm working you with my foot. Ladies and gentlemen, my first miracle. I take the piece of cord. You like the piece of cord? Yes? No wonder my pyjamas wouldn't stay up this morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this trick is called the Nottingham Rope Trick. Now, it's called the Nottingham Rope Trick because you start off by taking the two ends of the rope and knotting them together. And when you've done that, what you... It could be worse. I could be here in person. And when you've done that, what you do... You see, you take the pair of scissors. You like the pair of scissors, yes? She's stupider than I am. And you cut... And you cut the piece of rope, ladies and gentlemen, into two pieces. Watch the rope. One. Two, three. Hey, so I have two pieces of rope, ladies and gentlemen, of different lengths. One, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. What did the rest of you think? I have two pieces of rope, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, of different lengths. So I stretch the two pieces of rope, so they're both the same length. So I knot them together. I'm going to close my eyes for this next bit because I don't want to see how I do it. Here we go. One, two, three. Hey, there is a piece of rope, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Oh, thank you, so, oh, thank you, thank you. Do you want to clap now, or shall I go on? I'm just going to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to watch those two ends of the rope. There's one end. Goes into my fist. There's the other end. Goes into my fist. There's one. There's the other. There is the middle of the rope. Thank you very much indeed, thank you. I'm just going to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to watch one more time. While I tie another knot in this piece of rope, I like tying knots in pieces of rope. Some people drink, some people go out with girls. I tie knots in pieces of rope. In case you weren't watching before, what you do, you see, you take a pair of scissors. No, this time I use karate. hi hi And there is the piece of rope, ladies and gentlemen, in two pieces. So I coil the rope up in my fist. I say the magic words. Oli! <laughs> Torremolinos! And there is the piece of rope, ladies and gentlemen, completely restored. I tie another knot in the rope. This knot is called a slip knot. It's called a slip knot because it slips along the rope like that and becomes the knot that is not. This knot, ladies and gentlemen, is called a jumping knot. It's called a jumping knot because it jumps along at a rate of knots. And it's called a knot because it's not where you thought it was. There's many sorts of knots, ladies and gentlemen. There's the waist knot and the want knot and the top knot and the forget me knot. And so to end this knotty spot. I'll have a shot. You'll spot the lot. All the knots, ladies and gentlemen, on the one piece of rope. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. You take the rope. You <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Ah, the great 
Mr. Brando. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good to see you again. Very nice to yes. see you too, Ted, and hey. you all of you. Lovely. Now, listen, you're, you're also another busy gentleman. Where, where are you off to soon? Well, it's nice because this next week coming, uh -huh. I start a tour of a show called Funny Turns. Good, good, good. And, then, and then we go into London. We good. In March. Lovely. Which is very nice. Good luck. Nice. I hope it yeah. goes well. I'm sure it will. And thank what's you. going to be the clue then? The clue is this voodoo witch doctor's doll. You which see? Doctor's doll which is the we clue? put there. And here is the. Here is difficult. I don't understand it. Because magic, though not conjuring, part mumbo jumbo to. Keep out, not good, in short, outsize, the choice is up to you. That's well, difficult. I'm glad it's not up to me. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Soprano. Thank, Thank you, you Soprano. Thank you very much good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Bye-bye. Well, well, they're having a bit of a chat here. What do you think it might be? We think that's the bin. Of, oh, that's what, oh, they think that's the bin. How about you, Claudia? We think it's the bin as well. Oh, you're agreeing with them. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. You just heard that from the great Soprendo. I can read again both of these. Here we have the, the saw brought in from Terry Seabrook. Terry said, in fact, what did he say? Uh, that's one way of clearing the table. Just throw it all away. But will you be doing the same, or will you leave it where it lay? Terry Seabrook said that from the first item. This is, was brought in by Jan Mad. Jan Mad said, it goes through the air with a buzz. It'll give you a point of view. You'll find 13 before it. Does 13 bother you? It's a holiday, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh dear. Well, it's 13, not well, yeah. before. Well, well, that's what yeah. you might think it is. OK, well, look, we're at decision time right now. You have to select one you choose to reject if you get through to part three. Also, you two have to select one that you'd like to get rid of. Which one would you like to get rid of, Clive, if you get through? Uh, we think the doll. You'd like to reject the doll if you get through? Yeah. And how about you, Ken? We'd like to reject the doll as well. Oh, really? <clears throat> Both want to reject the same item. Well, at least we're unanimous on that. Now we come to the part where, in fact, we do have to lose one of you right now. Now, you know you've got the, bu the button right in front of you there. Put the hand beside <laughs> it because I'm going to start reading the information here that goes with this question. And as soon as you think you know an answer or the right answer, hit the button, answer. Please don't answer before you hit the button because the other couple will get a free go. Of course, once you've hit the button and answered, if you're wrong, the other couple once again will get a free go. If they're also wrong, I shall continue reading until we do get a correct answer. So good luck to both of you here now. Here it is. This is a man who was born in Budapest, whose family emigrated to the United States. Ah, well, that one went first. The light's on first, so Clive hit it first. Uh, Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini is absolutely correct, yes. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, marvelous. God. Hey, well. Well, Ken, I mean, that's how close that was. The light goes on, the first man to hit that button. You were right behind him. What were you going to say? I was going to say the same. He was going to say exactly the same. Well, congratulations and hard luck for you two. You've come this far, but we have got the money you won in the quiz. Libby has that. What was it, Libby? 630 pounds. Only 630 pounds, Anne, that's all. There's your ceramic dusty bin there. And also, as a little consolation prize, just take a look over here. A camera which takes movies and stills together with its own projector. Thanks very much for coming. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, will you thank them both? They've been wonderful people. Thanks, Ken. Good luck. Thank you, Anne. Terrific. Thanks very much for coming along. Man. Man, the big. Hey. Oh, says Sharon. Now, now she's really, really shaking there. Well, OK, we know what you're going to reject. It's going to be the voodoo doll, isn't it? When we come back from the commercial break, we'll see you then to see exactly what they have turned down. See you in a moment. Okay. Welcome to part three, where we've got Sharon and Clive from North London. And they have, in fact, got through to see if they're going to take home a great prize tonight. And they're going to reject the Witch Doctor's Doll, brought in, of course, by the great Soprendo. Let's see what it is that you've turned down here. Witch Doctor's Doll, magic, though not conjuring, part mumbo-jumbo two. Keep out, not good, in short out size. The choice is up to you. So what did you think it was? Bin. <laughs> yeah, you think it was the bin? Do you think it's the bin, folks? Oh, good. Well, at least they're with you. That's good. So let's see what it is exactly we have here. Magic, though, not conjuring, part mumbo-jumbo, too. Well, could the magic be black magic, then? That would tie in with Soprenda's Witch Doctor's Doll here. It could also be a warning. Well, it could be, because we said, keep out, not good, in short, outsize. 
Right. We did say part mumbo jumbo. Well, could the jumbo be an elephant? That would be a mammoth prize or an aeroplane. But this sort of doll, of course, has great connections with the West Indies. Well, if you've broken down that line, Clive, to keep out could be to bar. Not good is bad, and outsize, certainly in ladies' clothes, is OS, yeah? Put those three letters together, you can stick a pin in your choice, you'd have certainly been right up there in the sky. What do you think you've turned down? Oh, no. Barbados. Barbados. <laughs> 14 days in Barbados, that's right. Take a look. There you are, fabulous Barbados. Miles of beautiful coastline. A really sensational holiday this would have been. The hotel, of course, naturally has its own pool, in case the effort of walking across the beach was just a little bit too much for you. <laughs> At night, of course, you could dance to the fabulous steel bands that they have out there, relax in the warm glow of the sunset, and maybe just try your hand at the limbo dancing here. Any good at that, Clive? No. Well, maybe it's a good job you turned it down. <laughs> All together, two magical weeks, and you've turned it down because you thought it was Dusty Ben. Huh? Yes. Yeah, and so did you too, you see. So what a shame. A fabulous prize. What a shame. Well, OK. Been rejected. Terrific prizes is always on our program, as you know, but uh, we've got a soldier right through because now it's time for ladies who certainly have a magic all of their own. They have a display here of prestipeditation. Now, I didn't know what that meant until I looked it up. It means sleight of foot. It's our lovely young lady's lipstick. <laughs> Martha, now, what are you going to leave them, these folks, for the clue? Well, I'm going to leave a trick. A trick? Today, yes. Da, 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 da. Oh! Hey! <laughs> what about a ripple? Must be! Must be! Lovely. So, the trick is going to be the clue, and what does the rhyme say? The rhyme says, You have to watch magicians, and watch them carefully, too. With sleight of hand, but under your hat, ours give you more than the old one, too. Now then, Sharon. <sighs> hum. Nice. Me, that one. It has. Well, I tell you what. Let's <laughs> thank indeed, Marta from Lipstick. Thanks, thank Marta. You. God bless. Thank you. Good luck, brother.
Fabulous. OK. So that one's got you stunned a bit, is it? Yes. Yeah. Well, again, I can, I can read one. This one again, the abracadabra, which came in from uh, Jeanne Matt, or Terry Seabrook brought in the uh, saw. Yeah, you want to hear that one again? OK. Terry said, that's one way of clearing the table. Just throw it all away. But will you be doing the same, or will you leave it where it lay? Now, OK, you've just got rid of a fabulous prize. I know who you're looking for, and so does everybody else. So uh, one of them has to go right now. Which one are you going to reject? reject the saw, yeah. The saw. Yeah. You want to reject that? Yes, I yes. think so. OK, so you're going to reject the saw brought in by Terry Seabrook. Let's see, indeed, what it is that you've re rejected this time. That's one way of clearing the tables, so this could have something to do with their dining table, if you remember, that they had there. But after they'd finished there, there was just a lot of broken pieces on it. Or So should you just throw it all away? But will you be doing the same, we ask, or will you leave it where it lay? Well, Lay, so we are back to the table idea, and I remember, Sharon, you mentioned something about that, I think, earlier on tonight. Uh, well, you have left it where it lay, but uh, have you done the right thing? Don't forget Terry's saw here. Now, a real one, of course, would produce quite a bit of dust, but the table, in fact, stayed intact. And so does this magnificent dining table, together with all the pieces that you see on it. Just take a look at this. Come round, come and have a look at this, round here. Take a look at what you've rejected here. Oh, the fabulous dining suite there. There are place settings for six, oh, Fiona, aren't there? We can't yes. get them all on. The fabulous cut glass, of course, take a look at that. Oh, Not bad, eh, Clive? Very Not nice. quite a dusty bin, well, was it? Well, it looked nice in a flat. <laughs> it looked good in your flat. I mean, it looked good anywhere. It's fabulous. And, of course, naturally, the table does extend. You know, that doesn't help when you've rejected it, does no. it? No. Fabulous prize, all this wonderful cutlery, too. What can you say? A bit upset. We're going to go back there and look for that character. Thanks, Fiona. Take it away. Let's go back to the table. So, we're going to have to go around there. OK, so that's it. That's two down. We have three to go. We're going to have one more item now for you to look at, and then we're on the homeward leg. Our final magic item now. We have a young man who'll be a lot more popular with you than he is with the life assurance companies. They won't touch him. Nobody can touch this man. He's sensational. Will you please welcome the amazing Shahid Mali. Thank you. Ladies, gentlemen, good evening. What you're about to witness this evening is an escape or an attempt to escape from a prison regulation straitjacket. And I've invited a member of the audience to step forward to do the tying up and also to make sure that everything is done fair and square. This particular escape that you're about to see has proved fatal for some other escapologists in the past few years, therefore making this the most dangerous high-level escape in the world. I therefore strongly suggest that you do not hold your breath during this performance, for after this, you'll have no breath left. Finally, before I go, I must make it perfectly clear that in the event that I should suffer any accident, injury, or even death during this performance, no one, and I repeat, no one, shall be held responsible. The risk is entirely my own. Thank you. Goodbye.
as you can see, it's a perfectly genuine rope. He's pouring methylated spirits and paraffin over the rope. Shahid Malik escape in time? about that something else yes. they tell me Shahid you, you hold two world records I'm not surprised what are you gonna leave these two folks then as uh, the we've got some liar dice for liar the clue. dice is the clue That's it. yeah liar dice is the clue and the rhyme says and the rhyme is dicing with disaster is what the game's about if this is what you're after we hope you don't play this one out now Sharon that's another one that sounds like the bin. Oh, dear. <laughs> they all sound like the bin tonight. Well, we know one of these three are, but I'm sure you're going to thank Mr. Shahid Malik, thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Wonderful. Cheers, yes, Shahid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Terrific. Second thoughts on that yeah, one? Yeah, Shahid says they're liar dice. So uh -huh. Dicing with disaster. Yeah. Could mean that if they're lying, you're not... Dicing yeah. with disaster. Well, we're dicing with something here. Well, we have the two here. One that we can bring here, this one again, which was brought in by Marta from Lipstick. She brought in the trick. Yeah. Or the abracadabra brought in by Jeanne Mad. I think we'll hear this one. You want to hear that? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Please. Okay. Marta brought in the, in the trick and she said, You have to watch magicians and watch them carefully too. With sleight of hand, but under your hat, ours give you more than the old one too. So, anyone can go. It's entirely up to you. Yes, that one. Yes? Yep. Clive, that's what I say. Not even married yet, but he's making decisions straight away. <laughs> Good. And I've also been told during the break that he's got a few stitches in his legs, so standing there is pretty tough because he, he plays for the Crouch End Vampires, isn't it? And the Coffin Casuals. And the Coffin Casuals. Who did you get that playing for? Coffin Casuals. Oh, dear. <laughs> OK, you're rejecting the, uh, the wand, duster, feathers, whatever you want to call it, the trick. You'll have to watch magicians, said Marta, and watch them carefully too, with sleight of hand, but under your hat, Ours give you more than the old one, too. Now, you have to watch <clears throat> magicians and watch them carefully, too. Well, we had a few good examples of that tonight already with the marvellous tricks you have seen. It's a bit like trying to solve these rhymes, Sharon, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, what about the trick that Marta gave you? The clue, the vanishing cane, did that make you think that the prize was nothing? Well, the trick was sleight of hand, and that cropped up in the next line. With sleight of hand, but under your hat, ours gives you more than the old one, too. Well, if you look at somebody wearing a hat, what would you usually see under the hat? 
their face. Yeah. A couple of hands, and in the first two lines, a couple of watches. Well, when it comes to hours, yeah, we were going to give you more than the old one, too. We were going to give you 24 hours with these two magnificent gold watches. Take a look. <laughs> Now, there you are, worth a pretty penny. Look at, look at those, Sharon. Can, can we take them out or not? We yeah. can't. Can we? Or are they fixed in? Well, I think let's take the whole thing out, shall we? Look at that. I think you'll agree they're sensational, aren't they? Yeah, lovely. Beautiful. Absolutely gold and worth, uh, well, a few bob, to yeah. say the least. <laughs> and unfortunately, we thought that was the bin, too, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And that's also been rejected. No wonder you lot went quiet. <laughs> well, it has to go. Thanks very much, Fiona. Two fabulous gold watches. <laughs> has to be taken away. There it goes. Oh, dear. Well, yes, now we're down to the moment I even dread. I've got news for you, <laughs> because we have the last two, and, of course, being the last two, I can read them both again for you. Now, this was the abracadabra card brought in by Jan Mad. He said, it goes through the air with a buzz. It'll give you a point of view. You'll find 13 before it. Does 13 bother you? That is what Jan Mad said. Shahid Malik brought in the liar dice and said, Dicing with disaster is what the game's about. If this is what you're after, we hope you don't play this one out. So, one has to go. We'll keep, we'll the, keep dice. the dice. You keep the dice? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> so what are you going to reject? This, the card? This yeah. Yeah. You're going to reject the card brought in by Jan Mad, who said, It goes through the air with a buzz. It'll give you a point of view. You'll find 13 before it. Does 13 bother you? <laughs> so here we are, the final two. It goes through the air with a buzz. It'll give you a point of view. A television, perhaps, or even an aeroplane. You thought of buzz earlier on. You'll find 13 before it. Might indicate 13 days before you come home again. No, I shouldn't think so. We wouldn't have two holidays on one program, really. Does 13 bother you, we said. Well, it is traditionally an unlucky number. So what about the abracadabra clue? Abracadabra was, of course, a spell, and each of the first three lines would give you letter clues to this prize. Through the air with a buzz. B. An I gives you a point of view, and there are 13 letters in the alphabet before you get N. Dusty B. You got it! <laughs> Absolute sigh of relief there, Sharon, yes. yes. And this is the prize that you are going to take home with you tonight. Liar dice brought in by Shahid Malik. Dicing with disaster is what the game's about. If this is what you're after, we hope you don't play this one out. So what are you taking home with you here? Dicing with disaster is what the game's about. Well, disaster you may face, but not quite as serious as the as one that Shahid Malik faced. <laughs> if this is what you're after, we hope you don't play this one out. But, of course, until you know what this is, you don't know whether... You're after it, do you? Well, what about the dice? Shahid Marlid, was he trying to trick you there? After all, they are liar dice, as you pointed out, Clive. Well, if uh, you were after dicing with games, and we hope you don't play it out, it should be an indoor game. Shahid wasn't tricking you. In fact, he brought you in the prize. These fabulous ivory poker dice. That's the prize. But there is just a little bit more to go with it. Take a look at this over here. Sharon, come through if you can. Just take a look at this. First of all, if you'd like to stand just there, I think we'll show you what you won here. Apart from the fabulous games I'll show you all about in a moment here, if I can make this work, I think I can. It goes somehow like this. A billiard table, ladies and gentlemen. A billiard table. And two chairs that go with this. And over here, as you can see, there are marvellous games here. This is leather, backgammon. We've got uh, the roulette there. We've got the cards, an electronic computer chess game there. A sensational prize, worth a lot of money. And more money Libby has for you there. 720, right. wasn't it, Libby? Yes. That I remember. They won that in the quiz. Terrific. Congratulations, Clive. Good luck to you. You sound he. Be thinking about you when you get married back there in May. There it is. It's all for you. Sorry. Have a marvellous time. We're going to look forward to seeing you next week, ladies and gentlemen. Till then, have a good time. Good night from everyone on 321. Bye now. Take care. Good.